here we have a product of two exponentials. So on the right hand side, we have the product of the exponentials P and Q. In this second video of this series on logarithms, we're going to derive three important laws of logs, which will allow you to easily manipulate and solve equations written in either index or log notation. When we think about the laws of logs, we first need to remember their inverse relationship with exponentials, as we saw in the first video, and therefore consider the laws of indices that you're probably already familiar with. So going back to the laws of indices, when we multiply two exponentials of the same base, we get the base raised to the sum of the exponents, that is m plus n. We also discussed in the previous video that we can think of logs simply as powers or exponents. Therefore, when we sum or add two logs of the same base, we get the log of the product of the exponentials. So to illustrate this, let's look back at the relationship between index and log notation. So in index notation, we have a to the power of c equals b, where c is the exponent, a is the base, and b is the resulting value of the exponential, a to the power of c. So now this equation written in index notation can be rearranged and written in log notation as log base a of b equals c, where log base a of b is equal to the exponent c. And we're taking the log of the exponential b. So keep in mind that an equation in log notation is giving us a value of an exponent, whereas an equation in index notation is giving us a value of an exponential, an important difference to remember. Now, comparing the index law to the equation written in log notation, in the index law, we have, we're adding exponents. So given that logs are exponents, we start by adding logs to give log base a of, let's use p, plus log base a of q equals log base a of some exponential. Well, remember, the number that we take a log of is an exponential, and here we have a product of two exponentials. So on the right hand side, we have the product of the exponentials p and q. So there you have the corresponding log, the sum of two logs of equal base and ex exponentials p and q equals the log of the product of the exponentials p and q. Now going back to the laws of indices, if we divide two exponentials of equal base, we get the base raised to the difference of the exponents. That is the exponent in the numerator, m minus the exponent in the denominator, n. Now comparing the index law to the equation written in log notation, in the index law, we're now subtracting exponents so given that logs are exponents, we start by subtracting logs to give log base a of p minus log base a of q equals log base a of some number. Well, remember, the number that we take a log of is an exponential, and this time we have a quotient of two exponentials. So on the right hand side, we have the quotient of the exponentials P and Q. So there you have the second corresponding log law, the difference of two logs of equal base and exponentials 
P and Q equals the log of the quotient of the exponentials P and Q. Okay, so now let's see if we can take this first log law and use it to derive a third law. Here we have a sum of two logs of exponentials P and Q respectively. Now let's try changing the exponential Q to the same as that in the first log to give a sum of two identical logs. This would mean that the product of the exponentials on the right side of the equation will simply be P multiplied by P. And as we know, P multiplied by P is just P squared. Now, looking back at the left-hand side of the equation, how could we rewrite this in a simplified form? Well, we have the sum of two equal logs. So this can be rewritten simply as two log base A of P. Now notice here that the constant two behind the log is equal to the exponent in the exponential on the right, which makes sense because according to the first log law, when we add logs, we get the log of the product of the exponentials. And if those exponentials are equal, then we'll simply have the exponentials being multiplied by themselves with each log that is added on the left. So if we were to add log base A of P three times, that would be the same as three log base A, of P, which means we would have a product of P multiplied by P multiplied by P, which gives P cubed. And if we have log base A of P added four times, we would get four log base A of P, which would give P multiplied by itself four times, or P to the power of four. So for any value of the constant behind a log, let's call it K, this is the same as the log of the exponential raised to that constant. So this would also mean that if we had a negative value of K, we would also have a negative exponent here, which we can rewrite as one over P to the power of K, since a negative power can be rewritten as the reciprocal of the exponential raised to the positive power. That is one over P to the power of K. So there it is, for any constant K, a log multiplied by k is equal to the log of the exponential raised to the power of k. So if you can understand how we derive these laws from the two index laws we looked at earlier and the third law as a special case of the first law, then you won't really have to commit them to memory because you'll understand their derivations. If you'd like to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon. And if you'd like to help support the channel so I can release more videos more frequently, please visit my Patreon page, the link's in the description, and any donations, however small, are a huge help and greatly appreciated. So thanks for watching and see you next time.